Hey there, friends. So I'm going to roast some of these Kenyan coffees that I have. And I recently wrote a blog post, Why I Still Love Dark Coffees, Dark Roasted Coffees. And caveat, properly roasted dark roasted coffees. So I, I would like to walk you through why and how I chose to roast some of these coffees darker. In the roast machine here, we have a Tambaya AA. So the AA in Kenyan coffee is not really a quality metric, but it's a size. So double A means that it's a screen size 19 or 20, 20 plus, a really big bean with a lot of surface area. So I'm gonna roast that one first because it actually roasts really easy. It's a past crop, so it's a little more dry. Maybe the density has been affected. So it actually roasts really easy. As opposed to the next coffee underneath here, which will be warming on the top of the roaster, is a Tambaya AB. The Tambaya AB is one notch smaller than the AA. So B is smaller than A in Kenyan coffee grading, green grading. And so the AB is in between A and B. It's an AB. So that just means it can be like an 18, 19, 17. It's a blend of these. You know, it averages around 17, 18 in terms of a screen size when you're sizing your green coffee. So the, the Tambaya AB is actually more difficult to roast than the AA. It's a smaller bean, so that means it has less surface area. And less surface area means there's less area for heat to absorb into the bean. That means our roast will go a little longer. I'll actually use a hotter profile for the AB than I do the AA. And I'm going to be recording on my screen as well how I roast these coffees so that you can see how I roast the Tambaya AA, quite dark. How I'm gonna roast the Tambaya AB at a medium level. And then the next coffee is a Gatugi AB. So it's the same size bean, but it's one year fresher than the Tambaya AB. So then we'll move to the Gatugi AB. Because it's one year fresher and maybe it's, I think it's mostly just because it's one year fresher. It's got more of the original moisture content inside of the bean, which protects it when it goes into the roaster. And then uh, we'll use the same heat application, but I'll take over manual control to ensure that we don't crash when we are approaching and entering into first crack. These Kenyan coffees are grown at really high elevations. Some of these coffees are like 1,800, 1,900, 2,000 meters above sea level, like super high coffees. They're on, the, they're on the borderline of Mount Kenya, which is one of the awesome high elevation growing regions in the world that will make the coffee want to crash. The smaller bean size combined with that super high density combined with a higher moisture content. People like to talk a lot about constantly decreasing rate of rise and avoiding crash and not flatlining. We talk about ROR's. The reality is a lot of it just has to do with what kind of coffee you're roasting. The same Kenyan coffee if it's an AA will respond very differently than if it's an AB. And a lot of that just has to do with the surface area. And uh, the final coffee is the ultimate test. It's a Kenya Gura PB. Now PB stands for pea berry. And so pea berry in screen size might be a 14, 13, 12, even under 12. Uh, it could be really, really small beans just that they fall through the smallest screen sizes, or it is that, um, excuse me there, it's that singular round bean, uh, the single bean that grows as a P shape. So it's just a round oval bean. And that oval bean that's super small, it's not gonna let the hot air, it's not gonna let the heat really affect it very much. And so we're going to really increase the heat application. As I move into first crack, I'm going to take manual control and really increase the heat because otherwise this pea berry coffee just nosedives. It's a high density. It's a fresher crop. 
and it's a pea berry. So that's just a recipe for disaster if you're trying to have this constant, smooth ROR steadily decreasing. The other thing is um, these coffees, I tested all four of them. There's one up here and then three getting ready. I tested all four of them at a light, medium, and dark roast. And I found that the Tambaya AA was really good as a very dark roast. It just has this sweet, syrupy, bold, smoky, uh, spicy, really nice roast profile. The light and the medium were just really boring. And so I'm gonna roast this one dark and I'm sending this sample off to a potential buyer so that they can see both the green quality and they can just taste my favorite roast. The Tambaya AB, we're gonna roast it kind of a medium, medium dark. The Gatugi is going to be roasted light. And then this Peaberry, I'm still kind of torn. I don't know whether or not I wanna roast it medium or dark. I think I'm gonna go medium, but uh, the Peaberry is, it's quite nice when it's light, but it becomes really tea-like. And just the medium has a lot more vibrancy and complexity. The dark roast on the Peaberry is also super fantastic. It just has like this chocolate, cocoa, mulling spices with this incredible sweetness. So maybe I should do two of those. Anyways, this is an introduction and I'm gonna be filming. I'll interject some of the different roasting here and I'll talk over the video. I hope it's helpful whether you're using the roast machine, you might learn something about taking over manual control when you're using a roast profile. I'll start with a power profile and then I'm gonna to move to the environmental temperature Nordic profile, which comes pre-installed on the machines. I actually love the Nordic profile for coffees like my Kenyans and my Ethiopians, some Colombians that like to crash, Guatemalans. Um, and then the power profile is one that one of the users developed. This is a really smooth, easy profile that I use for my washed coffees, which don't crash, like this first Tambaya. And then, uh, also just as a roaster so that you can understand how do I approach some of these coffees and really make sure they get developed properly. Um, you know, when I have a crashing coffee like a Peaberry, I wanna start with a really good charge temperature that's strong, so I'm punching it with this initial heat. And then before I move into first crack, I'm gonna punch it again just to make sure that I don't lose that momentum. These are some roasting methodologies. Hope you enjoy the video and I'll uh, share what I can. If you have any questions, please reach out in the comments below. Um, I'm always adding things to the comments. A lot of you have added great comments. Please share, subscribe, ask me what more you'd like to hear and we'll get roasting. Three, two, one, you ready for this? Let's go. This is the Tambaya AA, a really large bean, Kenyan coffee. It's a washed coffee but it's past crop, so it's a little bit dry and it roasts really easy. It reminds me of some of the El Salvador Pacamara that I've been roasting recently, just in the way it responds to heat. So remember that when you're roasting really large bean coffee, it's going to respond differently than your small bean coffee. So like we said, this is the Tambaya AA and you can see that initial turning point, the spike of the heat. Now this coffee I'm roasting on a power profile, which means that there's just this general flat uh, fixed power, and that's the bottom black line that you see here. So several different lines on the roast machine represent the power, which is the black. You have a uh, drum speed, which is the purple, fan speed, which is the green, the rate of rise is that yellow, yellow green that rises up and then falls down. Red is the bean temperature probe and blue is the environmental probe. So these are just some of the different settings that we have on our roast coffee roaster. This is my live portal that we're watching now. So on this Kenyan AA coffee, as I said, it's a rather large bean, it's past crop and it's um, because it's older and because it's a large bean, it doesn't take quite as much heat application to get it to roast properly the way I want it to. Now you'll see a slight dip in the ROR 
the bean probes on the roast are extremely sensitive. So those ROR calculations, rate of rise calculations, occur very quickly and uh, subtle changes in the bean probe or the environmental probe will give you these spikes and valleys. The key here though is that we just have real smooth development and once we reach first crack, we want the first crack to be very consistent and stable. So I'm going to finish roasting this coffee. It's roasting around that 70% uh, heat application. So that just means that the electrical element is using 70% of its power. And most of this profile, I will take manual control and various profiles. Most of this profile, I'll be using 60, 65, 70% heat application from that heating element. I won't take you all the way to the end here, but you can see just a general smooth transition. This had a very low charge temp. It was right around 165, 170 degrees. And so the bean probe and the environmental probe started there. And this was the first roast of four. I knew that it would be the easiest, most gentle roast. And so I wanted to put it on the front end. I'm going to save the peaberry for last because that'll be the roast where I want to have the most energy and uh, the warmest roaster just to help that come along. So see you in the next roast. If you have any questions on this or other profiles, please let me know. Thank you. All right, it's time to roast the Tambaya AB. And for this roast, we're actually using a different roast profile. We're using the Nordic roast pro profile, which has a higher charge temp than the last one. And uh, this one is 200 degrees Celsius. You can see this profile uses what we call a soak. And so when the coffee beans first enter into the roaster, it waits for about 30 seconds before it starts to uh, chase after the environmental temperature. Uh, to rise. And that just allows the beans to kind of soak in the heat of the roaster. So if you ever heard, hear the term uh, soak or the roaster soak method, that just means that you're going to delay power application so that the beans can soak up the ambient heat and energy of the roaster. So that's what that flat line on the blue is. Now uh, this has a very aggressive heat application, and so once we get going, we have a really low turning point, and then we're going to aggressively charge that environmental temperature. This is an environmental profile. So when we, when we approach coffee roasting, no matter if you're on a small roast machine or if you have a small drum roaster, an electric, uh, an air roaster, whatever method you're using, even a large roaster, you have different frameworks that you can think in as a roaster. The last profile was a power profile and that was the the concept or the framework in which the pro power profile works is that I say I'm going to start with a gentle um, heat application. So I'm going to go from 0 to 30 percent to 50 percent to 70 percent and then I held it at 70 percent and then later I lowered it down to 60 percent. So you can do that on a drum roaster, you can do that on a gas roaster. On this one, instead, what we have is this very smooth blue line, and we're going to chase after that environmental temperature, ever increasing. What is an environmental temperature profile? An environmental profile is where you say, I want the temperature of the roaster, the air surrounding the beans, the air that's flowing through the beans to increase according to this program or this profile. And then naturally the beans will come up to that energy application. Uh, the third way would be to chase after a specific bean probe temperature. And so that would be a bean temperature profile. The bean temperature profile is different from the environment because that's the red line. So maybe I want to see the red line go faster and then slower, so I'm going to create a profile to drive the red line. However, on this profile right now for the Tambaya AB and then the next two, we're going to be using this Nordic profile. Uh, 
you will see down there, down below, the black line is jumping up and down. You know, it's uh, increasing and decreasing very rapidly. Basically, it's just trying to trace the blue environmental line. And so if it has to add more power or decrease the power to stay on and trace that blue line for the environmental temperature, then we can do that. This has a very smooth, uh, strong spike. You see the green, yellow green line for the rate of rise. And then it falls down sharply. And then we just have this very constant now uh, rate of rise. Uh, that's, that's something I really uh, pursue, I really enjoy in the taste and profile of my coffees when they're roasted. Um, I think this Nordic profile does an excellent job. And the roasting theory behind this is just to have a strong, ever steady, ever steady increasing environmental temperature. Because that ever steady increasing environmental temperature is going to ever pull the bean temperature up which just gives me a nice smooth rate of rise which develops my coffees in a very even uh, tasty way. So we're entering the drying marker, dry end marker and soon it'll be first crack and then this Tambaya AB we're roasting to a medium level as opposed to the last Tambaya AA which we roasted to a dark level. So I don't want to share the entire roast, that would make the video extra long, but here you can just see some of the different elements at play as we have an environmental profile for our roast rather than the prior power profile. All right, we'll see you in the next video. There's the beginning of first crack. You're going to see it try to pull the blue line down. It's going to really pull on that environmental temperature probe because there's some extra moisture in the drum. And then you see that black line spiking. It's right up near 100% just to try to keep on the blue line and it can barely keep on the blue line because those dense beans are emitting moisture and they're cooling the roasting chamber. So there's kind of this artificial cooling that's happening. The blue line can't even stay on. All right, we'll see you in the next video. Not too much to say here on the Gatugi. Uh, we're using the same profile, that Nordic environmental profile. You've got the soak on the front end. You can see the black power line ever increasing. Uh, this one, and again, it's a good roasting theory, as you want to slowly increase the fan speed, that's the green. You know, the fan carries the convection energy of the heat and then slowly increase the drum speed that just tosses the beans and allows them to transfer heat more quickly. That's the purple line. Uh, that's kind of some of the beginning of the roast profile understanding. And then a, just a really nice smooth heat application. After two or three roast, your roaster should be more stable in terms of the, the heat energy inside of the roaster. And as we continue to roast this Gatugi this is a year newer, a year fresher than the Tambaya AB. So when we reach first crack, it will just have a little bit stronger uh, desire to crash. But as you can see on the front end, we applied a really strong heat. We had a good, quick heat application. Again, the environmental temperature is high and charging, which continues to help pull that bean temperature up, that bean probe temperature up. As a roaster and as a trainer, I always want to encourage you that the bean probe is a secondary indicator, okay? So what's really happening in your beans, the sound of first crack, that is what's most critical. The, the little red line there is a secondary indicator. In our rate of rise, that's a tertiary or a third place indicator. So. It's most important for you as a roaster to really have confidence in what's happening in your beans and what you're doing with the heat application. And I've consistently found that paying attention to my beans, cupping the results, and watching that environmental temperature, those are my leading indicators. That red line, that bean probe, 
and then the green line, the rate of rise. Those are kind of secondary and tertiary indicators. Because here you see that even that environmental probe is going to struggle. It's going to be pulled down while the heat application is right up at 100%. That's just because the beans are cracking. They're putting off moisture at first crack. So here we're going to finish up the Gatugi roast and then we're going to move into the pea berry. All right, here we are on the final Gura pea berry. Now this pea berry, again, remember this is a really small bean. It's super dense, high elevation, Kenyan coffee. But being small and extra round, it's aerodynamic, which means that it's hard for us to actually intersect it and hit it with our heat. Our heat is being delivered by hot air in the roast machine, and uh, there's just not as much surface area to uh, be impacted by and to receive that hot air. So the pea berry uh, has a very low dip. Look at the low turning point on this pea berry coffee, even though this is the fourth of our roast has a very low dip and uh, once we get into first crack we're going to really struggle we're going to constantly apply our heat so that we can continue to have a great first crack as i said on the last slide something that we need to pay attention to when we're roasting as leading indicators is the sound of that first crack and really the feeling the understanding of what we know we've been doing by influencing the environment of that roaster. The bean probe is kind of a secondary indicator. The rate of rise is just a calculation that comes off of the bean probe, so it's secondary, even tertiary. But really what we want to be seeing is how is this coffee reacting to the environment that I've put it in? And you know whether you have a flame drum roaster, an electric roaster, a hot air roaster, that's what we're paying attention to. How is the bean responding to the environment in which I've put it? So here we have a really quick spike and then it's going to drop. I'll skip forward a bit and save you some commentary so that we can finish this up here with a good explanation. Now we're just going to jump right ahead here to the end of the drying phase. I'd like to pull your attention back though just to that little uh, peak. On the rate of rise you can see we were falling after the turning point. We were falling down and then it pops up and then it falls down again. And that's an interesting little dip that can happen initially in the rate of rise. Usually what that indicates is that we could have used a higher charge temperature. And so some of your coffees like this pea berry, high density coffees, high moisture coffees, if you increase the charge temperature 10 degrees 20 degrees you're going to remove that little initial dip in the uh, rate of rise so you see that green line spike up fall down and then it spikes up again that's just kind of a recovery phase because I could have applied more heat on the front end uh, but it's continued on really smooth after that we're not going to get any anything inferior in the cup because of that it's just an indicator that I could have used a higher charge temp and that would make my roasting process a little smoother. Now, this whole roast here, we're going to enter into a, fr into a phase where uh, the roaster's running at 85, 90, 95, almost 100%, especially when we get to first crack here. The black line will be really peaking. And that's because it takes a lot of energy to keep the environmental temperature on that blue line and you're going to see it drag down as we enter into first crack here. Now you'll see a little spike, a little flick as uh, some people like to call it on the rate of rise. Again these are highly sensitive bean probes and I had just this nice steady first crack sound. I follow the bean. I follow the sound of the bean more than I follow the roast curve and so um, Right here you see it's going to start flicking up. I didn't find anything inferior in the cup and uh, I let the cup speak for itself. So I hope this was helpful. Okay, in conclusion, 
this was another look back on our Do Not Fear Dark Roasted Kenyan Coffee blog. And I wanted to explain a little bit of my methodology. I give you a sneak peek into the roast machine and how I did these four profiles. The Kenya Tambaya AA was a dark roast. It was quite dark and I really liked it dark. It was good. The AB was a medium, Gatugi was lighter, and that Gura PB was kind of a medium dark. It was kind of in between there. So you may have questions, and I'd love to hear your comments and feedback. Add them on YouTube. Uh, contact me through the blog or through my email newsletter. And if you'd like to learn more about coffee roasting, check out howtocoffeepro.com or sign up for my newsletter and you'll get the updates, lots of information to follow. And I look forward to helping you on your own coffee roasting adventure. Don't be afraid of dark roasted coffees. They can be amazing. Take care and talk to you next time. This is Adam. Bye.